and cut up some apples, which brings me, this is a terrible intro. Today we're gonna do a vlog. <laughs> Our first topic of discussion, which is, I've been wanting some fruit trees in my backyard. My backyard has no trees right now. It's super, super hot. So I'm like, we're gonna line up this bad boy with fruit trees. I'm just gonna try and grow some from the apples I bought from Costco. What I did earlier was I just wet the paper towel under warm water, put my washed seeds on one side of it, and then folded it over like this. And stick it in a Ziploc bag because we're gonna go put it in my east windowsill. So hopefully we get a tree <laughs> eventually, 10 years from now. Um, so we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight seeds in here, just on a damp paper towel. We are gonna see what happens. I totally have never grown a fruit tree from seed before, but we're gonna see if, <laughs> if we can't figure it out. And if not, then you know what? Next year I'll just go buy a tree. <laughs> How about that? I got some mail. Um, one of them isn't plants, one of them is. Which one should we start with? Let's start with the plant one. This is from Meepa's Pots and Plants. I'm really excited for this because it's something I've been considering splurging on for a while and then I was just finally, you know what? I'm gonna do it. Why not? Here's the logo. <gasps> it's the Meepa's Pots and Plants UFO Planter. The product photo shows, I think it's a fish bone cactus. Orchid. I don't know, one of the plants that goes like this is like the product photo and it looks really cool hanging out of the bottom. So I think I'm gonna try that with my dancing bone cactus, this bad boy. So it'll be like this. What do you think? Like hanging out the bottom. Oops, I dropped a rock. Oh my gosh, that's gonna be so cute. Wow, I'm so excited about that. I really, genuinely, I've been wanting it for so long. My second package, some like skin refills. Should I show you everything that's in here? I don't know. If this, these are all just like pretty much refills. I'm running low on pretty much everything or I'm out of pretty much everything. So the Hourglass Airbrush Primer. There's also Too Faced Born This Way. Multi-use Sculpt-In Concealer. To sculpt and conceal, ideally. The Dior Forever Skin Glow. Fenty Beauty Matte Skin Stick. Beauty Blender, precisely my brow pencil. Benefit Floritint 24 Hour Brow Setter Gel Lip Liner. And hopefully it's not broken. <laughs> Powder. Is that everything I got? Yeah. That seems about right. I'm honestly not really a makeup person, only like I said, for like special occasions, but I kind of want to try this all out. So, and we have time today. So I'm going to go get ready, actually. <sighs> Back to the planter. I initially proposed the Dancing Bones Cactus to hang upside down in this. And then I was thinking, I don't know, because it looks really cool hanging here. Here's my question. Here's the point of this. Do you think I should do the Dancing Bones with the Meepa's plant, with the UFO planter? Okay, oh, like this. So, ugh, don't fall. Dancing Bones Cactus or this one, which is closer to the plant that's in the like product photo I really like. I would love your thoughts and opinions on that. Good thing we're not doing this today so that I can get some opinions. I have a bad habit of rushing into things because I'm like really excited. So then I just wanna do the thing right now. It's probably better if I have a little bit of delayed gratification and make sure I'm gonna put the plant in it that I really, really want. Would love some feedback. Next up, I've been waiting all day to do this. I'm so excited, but I have this Alocasia dragon scale leaf. I was like, this leaf is so beautiful and so perfect. I wanna try and make some things with it, so I think the idea I'm gonna go with this time is I wanna make like a little catch-all bowl dish thing that I can have on the corner of my table here. I think it might be really cute. I just have polymer clay on hand, so that's what I'm gonna go with. Yeah, baby. There we go. 
I really like all the texture. I mean, I'll show you what I end up doing. Hopefully it does this beautiful thing justice. The worst part of making anything out of polymer clay is softening it. It's why I don't ever make anything, I hate it. Okay, my color's all mixed. It's this like beigey color. I added, I wanted it more green, but I actually don't have yellow or blue or green. I can always like paint it or stain it another color if I want to, but I'm gonna go ahead and roll this out. Okay, it's rolled out and I think it's gonna be just the right size so that we can squeeze this on. Oh my gosh, it's gonna be close. Maybe I need to flip it. Just gonna press it. Well, actually with my roller, I'm gonna gently roll it into the clay so that all of the texture goes onto the clay, hopefully. Thoughts and prayers, guys. I'm thoughting and praying. Thoughting. <laughs> this could be really, really cool or really, really dumb. Oh no, I don't think I laid it flat enough. Maybe I wanna cut off the leaf. There we go. Okay, now I'm gonna go in with the knife and cut along the edges. Okay, and I am gonna pull away the clay. Ooh -hoo -hoo! Wow, maybe I can pull it off, should I? I'm like a little nervous because I don't wanna ruin it. Oh, that's pretty cool. I just don't think it's gonna get any better than that. So we're gonna roll with it. I'm having a hard time because I don't necessarily want it this like folded, but I can't find my bread pan to put it in. So whatever. Okay. Now I'm gonna bake it and I'll show it to you when it's done. The oven's at 425. Bad news, you guys. I smell something burning. It's burnt. Dang it. But actually, Did the universe just bless me by burning my pan? Okay, and it wasn't the universe. <laughs> and what I did wrong was my brain wasn't on polymer. It was on bread, so I did 425, but polymer clay needs 275. But it's okay because I'm actually really happy that happened. Wait a sec. It's not even cooked. It's still soft. I think I have to let it dry in the bowl. I think that's my only option. I mean, it's partially cooked. It's not completely malleable like it was before, but... Good morning, it's the next day. Just gonna make my tea really quick. Our leaf from yesterday. I didn't throw it away because I thought maybe there was something else I could do with it, but I don't know for sure. I gotta think about it a little bit. This is elderberry tea. This thing stresses me out so bad. <laughs> Yeah, I need to go empty it. So it's the next day. Did I mention that? It is. And I let this cool in the bowl overnight and we're gonna try and pry it out of here. <laughs> I mean, okay. These are the colors. It looks a little weird. This color is a little bit fleshy for my liking. <laughs>
It's like bending the knife. Ah! Got it. Why is it so bubbly? Ew. This is not what I wanted. Um, let's go try and like set it somewhere. I, I don't have a lot to say about it because it's not what I envisioned. Kind of thinking for it to go. <laughs> That's so weird. Right here. Um, because it can be kind of like a catch-all type thing. So we're not putting keys on the wood. I don't want to like damage the wood, you know? Sunglasses? Nope. I, this really makes me uncomfortable the way it looks on the backside. Okay, and that was just an experiment. And unfortunately, I don't think it worked out how I wanted, so I don't know. We're gonna go get a little treat, a little pick-me-up, and my pick-me-up of choice is coffee. <sighs> Bismarck, you are just the sweetest, goodest boy. Yeah, I love you. These are some rose-colored glasses because the world looks so extra beautiful right now. But yeah, when I like look, normally I'm like, oh yeah, same old, same old. But through these glasses, I'm like really, wow, beautiful. No, thank you. Just drinks. Can I get a grande soy hazelnut latte hot? Nope, that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, sure. You probably love that. No, don't lick mine. They can get you one. Aw, thank you. You too. Okay, let's do this. Is that good? That was so nice of her, huh? Bismarck and I took a breather. I drank my drink and thought in my head and I wanna go work down in my grow tent, I think, and everything down there needs to be watered. Okay, let's go do it. So a little basement update. I don't know if anybody has noticed, but I haven't been filming down here a whole lot and it's because we are actually finishing it. Well, refinishing it. We had mold from the two times it flooded. We had to remove a bunch of the sheetrock and then do this mud it, I think is what it's called. I'm really, really excited to have them done. This one is going to be the computer like office. And yeah, the one we were just in with my big terrarium is of course going to be our plant room like slash filming room. So I've been kind of, brainstorming what I want to do down here. And I found a lot of cool things I want to do. Starting with the nipple light, that is going to become a Soltec light. I'm going to do one of the Highland systems. I'm really excited for that. Nothing against a nipple light, <laughs> just not my style. Okay, <laughs> to the grow tent. I found this thing, a sprayer that I'm going to go put onto a hose. And then I think that my tap outside will reach from outside to my grow tent. And this will make it so much easier. So fingers crossed. <sighs> Thank you, amen, okay. <laughs> oh, the two hoses are already put together. That's convenient. Wait, are they? Yeah, they are. <gasps> Ow! There was water in it and it's like boiling. Gotta turn on the tap. And spray out all that boiling wall water. Oh, it is freaking hot. Yeah, I mean, it's one of the hotter days this summer in Utah today. All right, moment of truth. Let's see if it reaches. <laughs> I really, really don't know why I never thought to do this before. Let's add a little water into my bi orb while we're here. Oh. 
Oh shoot. How's that? Here's the progress on the bio orb. My favorite plant growing in here is actually, uh, I guess the easiest one to see is this. Oh gosh, I need to clean the, the orb. But that's actually a scraggler. I didn't plant that in there, which you know, you guys know I go on and on about them. I love the randomly appearing plants <laughs> the best. And for some reason, they're always plants that if I like bought this plant and tried to put it in here and take care of it on my own, like I know it would die. I know it would die. Yeah. The orb. You guys, it's for sure gonna work. Look at this, check out this action. Water my moss pools. Easy peasy. Gosh, even watering with that is annoying. <laughs> moss pools are just kind of annoying. This is so nice. Wow. And it's nice I can turn the water off and on. <gasps> yes, I'm gonna definitely be doing this on watering days from now on. I, I really don't know why I've never had the thought to do this before. And it probably seems so obvious and stupid. I'm so proud of my brain for thinking this up. I'm so glad I got that treat and just allowed myself some time to sit down and relax, you know? That is something I've honestly really struggled with ever since having my kids. I don't think I've really shared too much about my like motherhood journey on here. If I'm being totally honest, I feel like once Kai was born and then like COVID happened and all the like social injustices that were being brought to light that like I personally had never realized before, it, it was a lot for me to mentally cope with like the postpartum hormone stuff along with that and I don't know I'm not I'm not somebody that deals well with stress I do think that only recently am I just starting to get out of that and it's been Kai's over he's gonna be four next February it's been a long time and the postpartum journey for me has lasted a lot longer than I expected it would. Partially, of course, because I had a second baby. You know, I'm gonna tell you, how I found out I was pregnant with Rai was on Kai's first birthday, we went over to my parents to eat and do like a smash cake. I was so ornery with my sister Ellie for some reason. At the point I finally decided I needed to make myself eat, I tried to take a bite of pizza and it revolted me instant nausea. Something about me is I've never met a pizza I didn't like other than that one. Anyway, the way I knew I was pregnant with Kai was I was actually in New York with my mother-in-law and sister-in-law and we went out to eat. Oh, it's that really famous pizza place. What is it? I don't know. I ordered my own 16 inch pizza and I ate literally every slice in one sitting. 16 inch pizza, okay? That's how I knew I was pregnant with Kai. It's kind of funny. It's like opposite ends of the spectrum for how I knew I was pregnant with each of them. My point of talking about that was only recently am I feeling like myself again. And like, I have the energy and the mental bandwidth, emotional, emotional bandwidth to allow myself the time to like find myself again, you know? It's four years now since I got pregnant with Kai and I've changed so much since then. All that comes down to say, I'm glad that lately I've been allowing myself the time to relax and just like sit there and think and do literally nothing because that's when I have all my best ideas. This probably sounds so weird, but now that I've realized that, things have gotten so much better and I'm able to think of things like this. And it all started with a little treat. So you know what? Just go get yourself the damn treat. You deserve it. <laughs> I don't know why I'm trying to be a motivational speaker, but <laughs> I guess I am trying to be that. <laughs> I have gotten a few questions about my bottom watering habit and if I'm still doing that and I am, but I have changed my strategy a little bit. So where I still do like to bottom water, when I'm adding the water into my bottom watering container, in this case, it's a boot tray, I do like to water straight through the plant to fill up the bottom container. When your plant gets a little bit 
to dry, which sometimes my plants do. If you only are putting it in the bottom reservoir, your plant doesn't always like lap it up. If you put the water through the plant itself, it's able to run through, fill up the container, and then I can leave my plants to soak in it so that I know it is adequately hydrated, and then I will empty the trays. That is one of the reasons I changed my soil mix to something a little more chunky and airy, because when I'm leaving my plants in containers like this, it's less likely to get raw if it's in such a chunky mix. The water keeps going down my sleeve. Why did that just suddenly start happening? I think I'm done down here, uh, but I did just wanna show you a few exciting things, actually more than a few exciting things because as I'm thinking about it, there's a lot of things I wanna show you. So first of all, oh no, the blooms are spent, dang it. I should have videoed it a little bit sooner, but yeah, they are so pretty. When the blooms first opened up, they smelled not good. I mean, they don't smell good now either, but they smelled like very florally, but almost not in a good way. I, I can't explain it. I actually really hated the way this smelled, but they are so beautiful. This is a Hoya fungii, fungii. Oh, that makes me kind of sad that, well, one of them's hanging on by a thread. Aw. My Hoya Carnoso Compacta that I am trying to bring back from the brink of death. This is my favorite Hoya I've had bloom so far because they smell like chocolate covered maraschino cherries. They are so cool, smell so good, super fuzzy. My camera's not going to pick it up, unfortunately. How does my iPhone have a better like macro camera, macro lens than this? I don't get it. Oh, there you go. You can see how fuzzy it is. Oh, they're so pretty. Yeah, it doesn't smell anymore, but there are more flowers forming right here, which is really exciting. I'm sure there's more peduncles around too. And all the tips are turning red like this, which is a sign that there's new growth. This plant, I recently put some diatomaceous earth on. That's why there's like all this white spotty stuff, but this is a cutting from my Sport Variegated Monstera. I filmed a video doing this like a couple years ago. I found this at Lowe's unexpectedly. It had really beautiful lime green variegation and I was really worried it was gonna go away because this leaf came out with no variegation, but this newest leaf, you guys, hopefully my stupid camera, oh yeah, you can kind of see it. Like right here, you can see a lot of it. Um, it is mostly on this half of the leaf, but it's really hard to see this kind of variegation until the leaf like completely hardens off. So I'm really excited to see what this is gonna look like. No new leaf on the way yet. That's really, really cool. Very happy about it. Okay, this one's pretty cool. So this is a Monstera Albo. It was just like a single leaf. You can see the, the node right here, the cut, but it was just a single leaf node and it has grown like the weirdest <laughs> variegation. So here's what the first new leaf looked like. There is a new leaf on the way right here, but it would be cool to have like an interesting variegated Monstera like this. That would be really fun and exciting to watch new leaves pop out. So fingers crossed y'all. And here is a little bog update. As you can see, it is catching lots and lots of fungus gnats, probably because there's so much water in here. I mean, it's probably not even catching all of them that it produces. There are also some little baby sundews popping up all over the place. So here's one right here. And then one of my utricularia is blooming and it's been blooming for a month now like a month straight. I thought for sure they were all gonna fall off in like one day. Yeah, it's so pretty. I actually wanna move this into its own pot underneath a cloche and bring it upstairs because I enjoy this so much. Such a cool plant. The little bunny ear blooms are so freaking cute. I also really think it's cool uh, down here. I'm really glad I did a clear base because I love that I can see how much it's spreading. All of this like root system with these leaves and stuff is actually this plant trying to spread around, which I'm very, very happy about. Wow, it's such a cool plant. I love my bog. 10 out of 10 recommend giving it a shot. <laughs> Making a bog, it's been so fun. I think we're about done in the grow tent for today. <laughs> Ooh, okay, so I think that's it for this video. Oh, should I show you my new pillows? Okay, my couch was feeling really not comfy and cozy, and I think it's because it's like pretty angular. I got a bunch of new pillows to add in addition to my other pillow, but this is the first one I got. This one, 
I liked the ruffles on this and I love yellow. Well, I don't love yellow. Like I wouldn't have yellow be my entire like color scheme, but I thought it was cute with the ruffles. It's a little bit like grandma. And I, I think that my style is like grandma. Over here are a few more. So I just got this, it's pretty heavy actually, this green velvety kind of pillow. It's really, really big. I love this material pillow. I already had this one, but it's the same material. I got this nice linen pillow, which I is pretty basic, but I liked the color. Burnt orange and like lime green, I really love together somehow. Yeah, so that pillow, this pillow, it's pretty 70s, I think. I added this heart pillow with this cute ruffle around the edge. I like really, really love this. Oh, my kids already got freaking berry on it. It's only been out for like a week. Makes my house more colorful, right? <laughs> love it. Hey, why are you licking your balls back there? Hey, this is PG. This channel is PG, okay? And then I added this pillow. I think it's cute. I like the colors that's, there is a little bit of yellow woven into the cream color. Uh, there's blue, green, and then of course, what the heck is that? This like mustard yellow line down the center as well as a cute little zip so that I can take the case off and wash it. And actually all of these new pillows are ones that I can remove the cover and wash in the washing machine because none of my old pillows, for example, this pillow, I have on the floor in front of my terrarium so that I can lay on it and watch the bugs in my terrarium. <laughs> this is from my old house and none of my old pillows before the ones I just showed you had removable covers. And I, I'm finding that that's very important with children. So yeah, that lives there. Anyway, I found that pillow in my garage and I had it at my old house. I wish I had found it sooner. Anyway, that's that. I don't know how interesting my pillows were, but I guess I just wanted to talk about them. It just feels so much more cozy and so much more like me, which I needed. And I'm telling you, it's from giving myself relaxation, like me time to do nothing. Thanks for hanging out with me. That's it for this one. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next one. Bye. Fish bark.